Good day and welcome. I'm Matt Morton. Hi, everyone. I'm Joanna Grama. Matt and I are both part of Vantage's information security practice. We're going to talk today about protecting student data. Joanna, what's the latest? Well, there's a lot to talk about. Um, in late December 2020, the U.S. Department of Education, through the Office of Federal Student Aid, or FSA, published guidance on protecting student information used in federal student aid, pro aid programs, and that guidance got a lot of attention. You know, that guidance reminds higher ed institutions of their continuing obligations to protect that student financial data and encourages them to use the NIST uh, 800-171 framework uh, for controlled unclassified information in non-federal systems as a roadmap for those data protection activities. And it's not new. The FSA has been encouraging institutional reliance on NIST 800-171 as a framework for best practices for some time. Uh, for instance, in 2015, FSA encouraged institutions to use industry information security best practices frameworks to secure personally identifiable student data. And it cited NIST 800-171 as a framework to consider. Uh, and then in 2016, FSA guidance grew a bit stronger and it specifically advised institutions to use, um, to follow NIST 800-171 to protect student data. You know, understanding those requirements for protecting student data can be extremely complicated. You know, colleges and universities that accept that federal student aid are bound by the contract that they've signed with the Department of Education. That contract does require institutions to follow the safeguards rule of the Graham Leach Bliley Act, or otherwise known as the GLBA. That's right. And then to complicate the regulatory picture, student financial data is considered controlled unclassified information by the US federal government. And that means that it's not unreasonable to expect that someday NIST 800-171 compliance will be written into the federal student aid contracts between higher education institutions and the Department of Education, just like GLBA is. Um, those issues are complex and nuanced and many fine organizations like Educa are paying attention to the regulatory landscape and advising their members accordingly. Yeah, that's very true. You know, this, this blog, though, we're not trying to unpack that regulatory landscape or argue where the FSA's focus should be, whether it's misplaced or it needs to be tighter and stronger. You know, instead, we're trying to answer that question that many forward-looking institutions are trying to answer. How do I secure the data entrusted to my institution? What should I do right now to prepare for compliance with NIST 800-171? And how will that integrate with my institution's current information security efforts? Well, I think we might have some thoughts on that. The first thing you need to do is really brush up on NIST 800-171 and what it requires. Educause wrote a great introduction to NIST 800-171 for higher education institutions a couple of years ago, and it's still particularly useful at explaining the basic concepts regarding controlled unclassified information and what NIST 800-171 seeks to accomplish. Yeah, you know, comparing the control requirements that are listed in 800-171 to the safeguards and to the controls you have enacted as part of your program is a good next step. Uh, and NIST has even provided an assessment rubric to help you do this. Um, you know, the controls themselves were derived uh, from NIST 800-53, um, and that was to protect that controlled unclassified information. You know, NIST 800-171 has 14 families of security requirements and they have 110 separate controls. You may find that many of these are completely covered by your information security program, regardless of which framework that you follow. And I'm guessing after you do all that, you need to create a plan of action for addressing any of the significant gaps that you uncover. Yeah, and if your program doesn't cover those gaps immediately, here's what you can do. Create a plan and get going. Uh, focus on the tools you own and the assets that you have, the logs and the data that you have access to. You know, Identify what that critical path is uh, to being secure. Um, take an agile focused approach, uh, rinse and repeat uh, the process. Do daily or weekly standups and identify your known barriers up front. Look for measures to gauge your progress, both 
while you're uh, securing your environment, but also what you want to have goals for when you're done. And communicate that plan. And let me rephrase that. Communicate that plan. <laughs> Do it over and over again, right? Make sure that you, know, you, you and your staff and the people that work with you on these programs work hard. Let people know what you're doing and share that with them. They'll, uh, they'll appreciate that. The final thing that's not on this uh, particular graphic, but you know, probably should be, is you know, have a party right with food. Uh, you know, ensure that people are appreciated for all the efforts that they've put through, even if you've only made incremental progress, because you want to repeat this process as frequently as possible. Well, I know I enjoy a good pizza party. Um, even though this action plan is aimed at assessing NIST 800-171 compliance, um, I think it's important to remember that effective information security practices can't and shouldn't be reduced to merely a compliance exercise. We can do better than that. Um, that said, NIST 800-171 compliance discussions are definitely here to stay, and they're going to apply to any institutional interaction with the federal government that involves control and classified information. I think research data especially is going to be implicated here. Excellent point, Joanna. I think uh, we can't reiterate that enough that you know, compliance is just the first step and is the base for what you want to build off of. You know, and we encourage all institutions to take that this moment and to continuously monitor, review, and improve your security operations as well as supporting your program in, in greater depth. Well, I think that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for our next blog where we're going to focus on how to keep your information security program moving forward while the threats and boundaries are changing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. It's funny, we can't complete without saying take care and bye. Like it feels not done. <laughs>